Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this FL Sun Q5 3D printer. So I don't have any experience with 3D printers, so I'm making this video series from the viewpoint of someone who has no experience with these devices. And if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to this on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, so we have foam padding here. These are the guides, there's three of them. And this is a Delta printer, which is different from a Cartesian printer that uses XY coordinates to move around. This actually uses three uh, bars that move around. So I'm guessing whoever programmed this knew trigonometry very well. So we have user manual. These are instructions on auto leveling. Approval certificate. So this is product information. It says the printer's default voltage is 220 volts. You need to switch the voltage according to your local voltage. The voltage switch is below the upper shell. So that's something I'll need to do. I'm on 110 to 120 volts. So these are some assembly instructions, user introduction, calibrating, and that's it on here. So I'll get these parts out and put on my table. So these are pretty heavy pieces here. Looks like extruded aluminum, but the motor has a lot of steel on it. So that's where the weight is has a traditional power cord like you'd find in a computer. USB cable. This is a putty knife. It's kind of blunt on the end. I don't know if that'll need to be sharpened. Otherwise it actually feels pretty decent. This I think is the spool holder that goes on top. These are the rods that hold the print head. These look like they might be carbon fiber actually, or graphite or something. And these have a little dab of Loctite on the end of the threads. This is the auto leveler. So this is likely a little tiny switch here. These are flush cut pliers. I have a pair very similar to these. Here are the tools. We have a small wrench, screwdriver. Oh, this is nice. This is an Allen key and it has a ball driver on the end, which makes it a little easier to use. You don't have to hold it straight up and down. You can angle it. Some smaller Allen wrenches, screws. They're all the same size. Zip ties. That's a little thing to clean the nozzle. Allen keys, and this is an SD card reader and an SD card. And I think the instructions are on this also with some other uh, test files and things. And this card reader is identical to the one I got with my Raspberry Pi Canna kit. Okay, this is the print head. Has a little fan on here. I've heard this fan can be kind of loud. There's no screw in this corner. I don't know if it's supposed to have one. This is the tube the filament goes through. And these are the connecting wires for probably heating. I don't know what other things this does. So I guess I'll find out. So most times you find that the bottom of things is the big part, but this is actually the top here. So the switch is around here somewhere. I'll get to that and I'll show that in detail to switch it to 220 volts. This is the extruder power switch has a fuse on it, USB, SD card. I was getting ahead of myself. There's nothing under this main foam. The bottom is here. This is the build plate. And it's heated and it has insulation on the bottom. Looks like about quarter inch foam. It's probably hard to get on camera there. And here's the filament. Not very much. It is sealed in a bag. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to attach these arms here to this. So if I look at the end here and pull the wires out, there's two wires, one says Z on it, so I need to find the arm that has Z. 
So that's this one here. So I'll pull these wires out. I'll put them through the middle of this bracket. I'll connect up the one that says Z. So this has a little clip on the end that needs to clip in here, like so. So you wanna make sure that this clip is lined up with the little nub. I'll press that in, it'll clip. And this one is keyed with a little protruding area right here. And that needs to go towards the outside. You can see the little notch there. I'll stuff these other wires back down in here. So now I'll install these M5 screws. Has the nice ball driver end. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, I found the correct one in the bag. It has the ball driver end on it too, so I'll put that in here. So I'm going to leave it loose until I get all of the screws in. And this will slide up out of the way. Okay, so I got one, two, three screws in here. These are all small, so you could break them pretty easily if you weren't careful, or strip them out. So I'm going to tighten these, and then I'll go ahead and check these later sometime down the road. So I'm going to repeat this on the other two sides. So I want to take a quick look at this switch here. It says 115 here and 230 here. And you can get to the switch through this slot, and I'll press it over. And it's a... It's a big switch in that it's not like a little dip switch. It's a you know, kind of a toggle, kind of a slide switch, I guess you'd call it. It's about as wide as this screwdriver end. So I stuck that in there and I switched it over to 115. And I think I said these were M5 screws, but they're actually M4. I'm going to leave these a little loose until I get the other end on and I'll tighten everything at once. So I'll probably loosen those up a little bit. Okay, that's finished, so now I need to put the build plate on. So that's going to go on the top. And the touch screen is on this side, on my left. So I have the build plate over there, and I want the FL Sun to go on that same side. So I'm going to put this on upside down, like so. And then I'll line up these holes and put the screws in from the bottom. Those don't bite very far into that, but it should work. This metal here also needs to go in this slot. Okay, now I'll turn this whole thing over. There is a cord coming out the bottom, so I want to make sure that's lined up so it's not pinching it. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten all these screws. So I tightened them all like this, as tight as I could get, which I can't get it super tight like that. And then I used it like this to do the final tightening. I gave it just a little, you know, like that to tighten it. 
So it feels very stiff right now. So now I have to install these rods. They don't appear to have any direction to them, so there's six of them. It looks like you can install any of these in any position. <clears throat> and these have that Loctite on them. I'm going to tighten these fully because these have this uh, tie rod kind of thing on it, and it won't shouldn't bind up at all. So I'll do that for all six. Okay, so now I'm going to point this towards the front. So if I'm reading the diagram correct, it looks like the logo, when it's in front, these wires should be in the back. So now I'm going to hook these arms up to this. I'm just going to use my fingers to get this started. Well, this is a lot stiffer. So the further I get in on this, the harder it is to line these up. It's not super hard, it's just I actually have to make an effort to make sure everything's lined up. Okay, next up is the filament bracket. So this is going to go on here like this. This should face up. This is where this uh, ball driver really comes in handy for things like this. Looks like we also have screws on the top of each of these posts. I'll turn this around to the back side to the extruder. I'll remove the zip tie on the print head. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to stick this tube in the extruder. So there's a little black clip here. I'll Pull that out. I ended up pushing it off on the right and left sides, and this was 3D printed. So I'll stick this tube in there, and I'll put this clip in here. Next, I'll plug these wires in for the hotbed. So there's a clip here and a little nub on the back side. Same with the other wire. Okay. I didn't see this in the instructions, but we also have wires here that need to be connected. They're all color-coded. So these can be zip-tied together. So I will, I'll move this up and down and see good places to zip-tie it. I don't know if that got caught on camera, but this needle is actually a needle and I uh, poked myself with it, so be careful. So normally I would cut these flush, but I'll leave a little bit in case I need to tighten them down a little bit later. If they're working good later, I'll just snug them up slightly and cut them flush. 
Okay, so that completes the assembly of the FL Sun Q5 3D printer. So I'm going to be doing a series and I'll make a playlist with all my videos. The next video I'll plug it in and do some calibration and things. And remember I have a link below on Amazon to this if you do want to buy one of those. That helps the channel out quite a bit. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.